Welcome to the Women's School. January Donovan here, your host, your friend, and your guide talking about are you entitled to have a beautiful life as a woman? This is a question that, you know, when I ask women, do you want to live a beautiful life? Do you have a beautiful life? It almost stumps women as though we are supposed to be taken back by the fact that that's not something we should even ask for. Why ask for a beautiful life? Why would you even? think about creating and living a beautiful life. And it's a tragedy that the thought or the conversation or the very um, intention of thinking about designing a beautiful life is almost seen as inconceivable. So let's go back and really talk about why we feel that we are undeserving of a beautiful life. What's What's the narrative that women have today where we feel that creating and having a beautiful life is almost impossible? That's what it is. We don't even talk about it. And when we don't talk about it, we actually put it almost at a distance in our life. And so I want to bring it back into the forefront because I believe women are entitled and are obligated to live a beautiful life. It's almost scandalous to say it is our duty to live a beautiful life. A beautiful life is for what? What's the purpose of a beautiful life? Before we can answer that question, we, at, we should ask ourselves, what does a beautiful life look like? Because if we don't know what that beautiful life looks like, how could we even aspire for it? Right? And so let's break down what a beautiful life looks like. Okay. Is it that you're able to wake up in the morning in peace, in freedom, and excited to conquer, to do what it is that you love to do every single day? Is it to wake up knowing today I am doing what I am called to do and what I love to do? And yes, there's going to be challenging moments, but I love what I do. And I love what I do because I know it is aligned with my purpose. And so when you wake up in the morning and you have that sense of excitement, that's a beautiful life. And then you enter into your morning, which means that you're not shoved, just trying to pack your lunch, hustle your way through breakfast, and rush out the door only to make it to traffic or get the kids fed, just run around with your head cut off. That's exhausting. That's not a beautiful life. On the contrary, what if we walked in the morning and we loved walking and entering in the morning because A, we love our homes, we love our space that we live in, we feel freedom that we can greet the people we love around them with such joy and excitement because we are at ease. We are at peace with ourselves. And what if that morning involved us actually already um, praying, meditating, studying, planning, and preparing before we even get ourselves ready for the day. That's a beautiful life. And then instead of our he- or us running over the head cut off, we are totally enjoying every second and we're not constantly just trying to go to the next thing. Now, you either you're a stay-at-home mom or you work at home and you find yourself growing and being stretched in a way where you're able to learn new habits, discipline, mindset. So you walk in there and you're like, wow, I love what I'm learning. I'm growing here as a mother, as an entrepreneur, as a teacher, whatever it is that you are deciding to do, right? That's a beautiful life. Or to be able to say, you know what? I realize that I need to really manage my health. I need to be able to exercise so that I can actually help, you know, be healthier. And I've just learned a new way of eating healthy, but it's going to require me to actually exercise. And so you can look at yourself and give yourself a command and say, I am going to get up every morning and from 6.30 to 7 o'clock, do put on a workout video and you're able to actually follow through with it, which means that you're not stuck. That's a beautiful life. Because your habits are now in a line and are, will help you towards your purpose and your call. You're not in conflict. And then because your cup is full and you're able to go with ease and calm, 
you are actually an invitation to everyone around you, including your spouse and your children, your friendships and your coworkers and your employees and your mentors and your mentee. And what it is, is that you become a solace of like this peace and calm. So yes, that's a beautiful life because you're contributing to their day. Your calmness is contagious and it's inviting and they want to be around you. That's a beautiful life. And so when you're able to do that, guess what happens? You're always nourished and fulfilled because every single moment you're actually giving to the people around you. You give because you can. You give because you're not depleted and you have the ability to because the strength of your internal peace is unshakable in the face of chaos and busy. Is that a beautiful life? I would dare say yes, because at the end of the day, when you lay in bed, you're saying, ah, oh, thank you, God. I have given it everything I've got today. I have failed. I have tried, but I have given it everything I've got. And it also means that we can do something, try something, and then fall flat on our face and look at ourselves and say, you know what? I totally tried. It totally failed, but it was my first or only my fifth time. I'm going to go at it again and give it another shot. And you know what? Failure is actually a gift because it strengthens our resilience. It allows us to develop our persistence muscle, and it helps us to get to know our capacity and our potential. Is that a beautiful life? Absolutely. Why? Because you don't give up. In order for us to discover our God-given mission and our calls and to create a beautiful life, we cannot give up when things are not quite as comfortable or easy. An easy life is not a beautiful life, ladies. Mediocrity is easy. There is no effort, extra effort needed to sit in the couch and watch and binge on Netflix. There is no extra effort needed to get up early in the morning to prepare our mind, our hearts, our body to be able to serve humanity, including our immediate family. There is no extra effort needed to tame our tongues so that we can actually communicate effectively. Mediocrity is comfortable, but guess what? It hurts. Why? Because we were designed to, to create and to live a beautiful life. So my invitation to you is, is it possible for you to dream of a beautiful life? And why would you want to design and create a beautiful life? Now there's one answer and it should be the same answer for all of us women. The motivation behind creating a beautiful life is very important because there lies our fulfillment. Because if I want to create a beautiful life so that I can be a source of admiration and an end in itself, that is self-serving. And when we serve ourselves, we feel empty because we were created for expansion and generosity. Our mission, whatever it is, is actually to give, to be generous. And that generosity is actually an act of fulfillment right? So you have to ask yourself, so you have to ask yourself, am I allowing myself to desire a beautiful life? And what is my motive? If I were to say, you know what, January, I want a beautiful life. What is your motive behind creating a beautiful life? And so the answer is one thing, and it's that we are here for contribution for a life of generosity. Therefore, everything that we create is there to actually help expand everyone else around us. That who we are becomes a gift to humanity. It is not an end in itself. This is why we think that money is bad, that power is bad, that um, you know, uh, material is bad, or having um, personal development is bad because it, we think it's about us. And it could be, but that doesn't have to be the case right? We can be that woman who defies and actually gets in line with purpose and contribution. And that we create a beautiful life, a life of actual freedom and peace that is intentionally 
designing her contribution throughout the day and is asleep and is going to bed fulfilled every day, knowing she's going to have another opportunity to contribute again tomorrow, that is a beautiful life. What are the roadblocks to a beautiful life? Number one, we're not dreaming about creating it. Number two, we're not intentionally designing it. We're just satisfied with lives that are given to us, right? So we then have labels of, well, I'm just not a morning person or, you know, I'm just not really good at, I'm just not a runner. That's mine. And then we then settle. The roadblocks is that we're unwilling to work on ourselves. Here's the amazing thing. Now that you understand that that could be a roadblock and that you are entitled to create a beautiful life, not for your sake alone, but for the sake of giving to the people around you, would you say, you know what, Junior, I want to design the beautiful life. You know what, Junior, you're right. Maybe I've never thought of it that way. And so the third thing is that there really isn't training out there to create and design a beautiful life. There isn't. I mean, we're not taught in school to design a beautiful life. We're given a lot of algebra that I'm not using, by the way, and they're all good because of and it's important discipline or, or certain things that you need to, such as engineering. But I don't think it should be, I believe schools should be teaching more of life skills and not just information for the sake of information. But that's another podcast in itself. What I want you to consider is that where can I learn how to create a beautiful life? Now you have to be on a quest. You have to be on a mission. This is why we created the women's school, but there is, there is no um, cohesive place for us to learn how to be a woman and how to be human. This dream was born in my heart 20 years ago because I was that woman who was trying to fidget my way around because there was no place that I could just learn how I was willing. And so that's my invitation to you is number one, you are entitled to a beautiful life. It is a duty for you to create a beautiful life of peace and intentional contribution. Therefore, it is your responsibility to find out how you can create that beautiful life. And that beautiful life that you're creating is there to serve everyone else around you, such as your children. You want to be able to look and say, my children someday, if you're single, actually want to emulate the life that I have given them because it's a beautiful life of peace and freedom. Okay. And that anxiety is okay in small births because it helps us move into action, but prolonged anxiety is damaging to a beautiful life. It is damaging to a beautiful life. Anxiety is damaging to the life that we actually want to create. We can't contribute when we're anxious. Why? Because we're not peaceful. And what they're going to experience from us is anxiety as opposed to calm and peace, which is really what everybody thirsts for, right? That peace of mind, that it goes beyond understanding, that draws people in. That's a beautiful life. And so, ladies, the invitation for you is to be intentional. Don't be passive about designing a beautiful life. Don't conform to what everyone else around you is saying, how you should live your life. Find out the woman that's designing her life of contribution intentionally and go follow her and learn from her. I do that. We should be a mentor and a mentee all the time at the same time for the rest of our life, which means that you're looking for mentors out there, but you're also mentoring other women because that helps you actually create a life of contribution and it actually creates accountability. So go out there and really be intentional about growing. Okay? In the Women's School, we give you practical tools. And this is my invitation to you. In the Women's School, you are going to get the how to be a woman and how to be human, okay? In a cohesive place where you can then give yourself the tools you need to design a life of contribution. So check out the Women's School, our self-worth masterclass, which is the beginning. We need to understand our value as women. Thank you, ladies, for listening, for being here, and for um, opening your heart to the mission and vision of the Women's School, which is to unleash our God-given call by becoming whole and to give from a place of abundance so that we don't default into a life of depletion. This is January Donovan, your guide and your friend. <clears throat> Thank you again. Uh, 
Um, and I look forward to really being in this mission with you to be able to help the next generation into greater freedom. January Donovan here with the Women's School. Thank you and, and see you at the next podcast.